The Sports Source is brought to you by Fast Frame. Turn your memorabilia into a work of art. You are watching East Tennessee's first and only year-round sports talk show on television. This is The Sports Source with your host, John Pennington. Good Sunday morning. Welcome into the Sports Source. We have a jam-packed show for you. And today's show, of course, brought to you by Bill Hotz and Associates. We appreciate them presenting the show. Uh, packed house. We got draft coverage galore. Uh, Daniel Hood, VFL Daniel Hood's with us. We are talking a little bit of inside, uh, in, give you some insight on UT basketball. VFL Lou Evans joins us today. Happy to have him with us. Mark Pankratz back with us as well. So it's a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of information that you might not get elsewhere. So let's dive right into it. First segment, as I said, brought to you by Bill Hotson Associates. When you've been injured in an accident, it can often leave you under financial stress, much less the medical stuff. But time off from work, doctor's bills, then, then you're under it when that happens. The team at Bill Hotson Associates can help you pursue the compensation and justice you deserve. Bill Hotson Associates, those are the folks to call 30 years of experience in East Tennessee. All right. Uh, Want to welcome in the, well, let's just jump right into this. I'll welcome the panel in a second. Uh, Vols return to relevance. Let's talk draft. This saves time. Two-year draft drought ends for the volunteers. Draft drought, that's not easy to say. Six players were taken from Tennessee through the first four rounds. That is the most for Tennessee since 2002. You see where everybody went right there. We'll, we'll dive into these guys and tell you about their matches, where they, where they landed and how good a match it is later. But Barnett to the Eagles, Kamara in the third round of the Saints, Sutton, third round of the Steelers, Reeves Maven, fourth round of the Lions, Malone to the Bengals in the fourth round, and Dobbs, fourth round to the Steelers. And then what does this mean overall? Those of you who've watched our show for years know that we've got the, the draft chart we use every year. What we do, this smooths it out. We look at this by four-year classes. So going all the way back to 1990, to 93, that class, right up through this class of 2014 to 2017, it shows you how many draft picks you've had in those four-year cycles. That huge number in the middle, yeah, that's right between 98 and 2003, where all those guys started leaving. And then you see the long slide down, that sad, sad slope <laughs> down as Tennessee just didn't have as much NFL talent as it had previously. But now, for the first time in a long time, a little bit of a turn up. And we'll look in overtime today at next year's roster. Could be going up again next year. So uh, the Vols had a good day at the draft for the first time in a while. Hadn't been able to say that several years. <laughs> Gentlemen, biggest surprises, biggest disappointments. What stood out to you guys about Tennessee and the NFL draft? Can I start with a disappointment? Sure. I thought Alvin Kamara going in the third round was a little disappointing from the standpoint of you, you got into the postseason with Tennessee, you got into the combine, you got into the pre-draft stuff, and then people were talking, hey, he could work his way into the first round. He could be somewhere 26, 27, 28. And then most people settled on second round. And after watching him for two years and seeing how productive he was, you go back to the 40 time he ran at the combine. And it wasn't good by NFL standards. It wasn't terrible, but it just wasn't good. It was average for a guy that plays running back in the NFL. And I just wonder how many people, you, you sit there and you watch two years of film with a guy, and he looks, when he's healthy, outstanding, and then you let three times down a 40-yard dash track push him back that far. So I thought, from Alvin Kamara's perspective, it was a little disappointing. I thought a surprise was that everybody goes by the end of the fourth round, that you get everybody in there, because I think that helps solidify that you will have everybody on a roster at the start of the season, unless there's some circumstance that we don't see happening right now. I think they're all going to be playing in the NFL. If we're talking about a guy going in the sixth or seventh, their, yeah. their spot might not be as solid. Yeah, I mean, if you go, I was no. getting kind of worried for some of those guys once you were getting midway through the fourth round, because if you get, sometimes you get in the fifth round, you got to make the team. Yeah. Yeah, you, right. you may be practice squad. Fourth round and up. I, you you gotta, there's enough to money the involved yeah. that you're probably going to make the team. Yeah, yeah, fourth round up. So some of those guys like Malone, um, and Reeves Maven, I was thinking, okay, yeah. this drop. Well, I didn't yeah. see Reeves Maven. That, to me, right. that, that was, was the surprise. surprise. Yeah. Go ahead, Jeff. Jalen, that, that was my surprise that with the uh, shoulder uh, problems, I'll say, that he went in the fourth round. A surprise to me was that Tennessee had a player taken in the first round before Alabama or Florida had a player taken in yeah. the first round. That can kind of gig it in a little bit. <laughs> Mike, what's that to you? I, I thought the good surprise, not really a surprise, but good news was Derek Barnett going – you saw some people say, well, he might drop down toward the lower end of that, yeah. that first round, but 14's good for him. 
I think maybe on the other end, Jason Kroon would have liked to have been drafted. Yeah, I see that. I see two angles to that. One, would have liked to have gotten drafted, but two, <laughs> if it would have been in the sixth or seventh, you're better yeah. off. Better to go yeah. pick. I'll say he would have liked to have gotten drafted in the fourth round. <laughs> yeah, well, yes, and the interesting thing is with Kroon, you know, the Bills fired GM Doug Whaley this morning. Mm. Thanks for the draft. But you would yeah. assume he didn't have much to do with the draft. Now, they're mm -hmm. talking about firing all their scouts, too, or a lot of their scouts. If that's the case, who is it that liked and sought out <laughs> Jason Kroon? If you're Jason Kroon and you signed with the Bills, and now some of those guys are gone. leaving, yeah. that could be a, a situation. But the fact that he signed with someone suggests that he would be able to bounce somewhere else if it doesn't work in Buffalo, at least get another shot. Um, anybody uh, surprised at Cam Sutton going where he did? I, I was... He had taken – there had been yeah. some criticism of him because where do you use him? His body's kind of small to be – to be. Uh, right. As, he's not going to be a man corner. So I thought you put him in, with a team that plays zone okay. There was talk about maybe he'll be a, a nickelback. I was a little surprised that he went before uh, Dobbs mm -hmm. and Malone, to be honest with you. I thought Sutton – would have fallen a little bit. Well, I, I kind of thought that Sutton, you know, when he was at the end of his junior year, people were talking about if yeah. he comes out and he's first round draft pick, he ought to come out, he ought to come out, he ought to come out, and he didn't come out. I was a little bit surprised from the standpoint, not that he, that he went in the third round. I think that it was a, a situation of you take a guy the opposite of Kamara. He was productive. Okay, he's got a size problem. He's not a super, super fast guy. But I think somebody looked at his tape and said, you know what, he doesn't fit anything we've got. But look at how he plays. Look what yeah. he does. Look at the production he had as a player. So so I kind of thought all along that he would be in that and, and the Steelers, also helping special teams. For a yeah. long time, of course, the, the Patriots, but the Steelers seem to do a very good job of evaluating. And, and their drafts through the years, to me, seem to be pretty solid. Tell so you. the fact they took him – says they saw something obviously they liked there. Well, it's interesting. I mean, the, Mike Tomlin, Butch Jones, everybody knows their yep. friendship. UT uses it in recruiting all the time. The, the quote from Mike Tomlin that I'd be happy to send my boys to play for Butch Jones. So, it, clearly, I think he knows what he's, what he's getting with UT. Uh, I was talking to Daniel Hood earlier that that happens a lot in the, in the NFL that coaches go back to certain reservoirs. That's a good thing. And the secondary, Jones, the if secondary he's got those connections. was the biggest area the Steelers improved last season over the previous season. It was a liability two years ago. Last year, they had some hitters in there. They were making plays. Uh, yeah. Sean Payton spoke glowingly of the class overall and, of course, ends up taking one guy, Alvin Kamara. All right, and uh, Browns didn't take anybody. We'll talk about that a little later. <laughs> uh, let's, let's go ahead and cut this segment short so we can do more stuff in the next segment. What we're going to do, we're going to run through the first three guys drafted. I want to talk about them specifically, Barnett, Kamara, Sutton, where they landed, which guys got good fits, which guys eh, maybe not. Come on back on the Sports Source. <laughs> 